Hi, my name is Darren Andrews and I am the director of One to One Maths Tuition. Today we're going to be looking at the topic of integration. This is something I get asked a lot by my students, so I just thought it would be good to do um, a tutorial on it and explain the different sections of this question and how you would go about answering them. So part A is find the coordinates of B. Now what we've got is um, a curve and a straight line passing through the curve. It passes through the curve at points A and B. Point A we know has an X coordinate of zero because it's on the axis, it's on the Y axis, you can see that. Point B, well that, no, that's somewhere else. So we need to find that and that's why they're asking for that because that's not as easy to find. Um, trying to find B, all it is, it's the point of where the curve and the line meet. So if we make the curve and the line equal to each other, then we can find that point of in intersection for X. So let's do that. So part A, we've got four X squared minus 6x plus 5 and make that equal to the line 2x plus 5. Um, we can now get rid of the 5 because we've got 5 on both sides and if we subtract that it's gone, it's eliminated. The next thing we can do is bring the 2x to the left hand side of the equation so then we've got 4x squared minus 8x is equal to 0 and then we can factorize um, the rest of this equation which would then be 4x and x minus 2 equals 0. That then is going to give us our two coordinates for a and b. 4x is 0, so therefore x would be equal to 0. So you must not forget that. Um, our uh, coefficient of that bracket still is one of our solutions. So 4x is 0, so x is 0. And we've got then uh, x minus 2 equals 0, so x is equal to 2. So we've got our values on there now, which is going to be 2 and 0. Um, now, it's probably a good idea at this stage to figure out um, the y value because it does want a coordinate. So I would always use the linear equation, which is the equation with no squares, and always go for the basic of the two equations when you're trying to find that other coordinate. So we've got then y equals 2x plus 5, so we'll write that down below, y equals 2x plus 5, that's our straight line, and then we're going to substitute both 0 and uh, 2 into that equation to find our corresponding y values. So we'll do a first. So a is going to be, well, x is 2, uh, x is, I'm sorry, x is 0. We're going to put 0 into the equation, and that would be 2 times 0 plus 5, and that would be 5. For b, same thing again, we're going to put 2 into the linear equation, which is going to be 2 times x, which is 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 5, which is going to be 9. So we've now got our um, coordinates for a and b. We know that the y coordinate of a is 5 and the y coordinate of b is 9 and the x coordinate of b is also 2. So that's part a completed. So they only wanted b there, but I think it was important to find a because I can see that looking at um, the later part of the question in part c in particular, we're probably going to be needing the coordinate of a as well, the y coordinate of a. So that's our coordinate for b. Right, for for part B of the question, they want us to integrate the curve. Now that means find the area beneath the curve, um, not above the curve. Now you can see that there is a region shaded above the curve and that's nothing to do with this part of the question. We're actually now finding that region beneath the curve. So let's do that. So we've got 4x squared minus 6x plus 5dx. Um, to integrate, really easy. Um, you've just got to remember um, it is like a recipe, you are doing the same thing each time. We're going to add 1 to the power and then divide by that power, that new power that you've created. So we've got 4x add 1 to the power cubed over 3 minus 6x squared over 2. Now when you've got a constant like 5 at the end, you then create that as a coefficient of x. Um, also, when you don't have what we call limits, which go on numbers that go at the top and bottom of the integral, you add a constant. Now we'll break that down and tidy this up a little bit. So 4 over 3x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x plus c. And that now is part um, b completed. So just to be clear, I've now found the area that would be below that curve at any given point. So we've not stated where or 
which part of the curve which part of the curve we're looking at but just generally any area underneath that curve that's why we've got the plus c at the end as well because we don't have a value yet where that will be right um i'm going to shrink that down a little bit on the page so we can make room for the um the harder part of this question which is part c um this time it's saying show the area of the shaded region R bounded by the curve C and the line segment AB is 16 over 3, 16 thirds. Um, okay, so what we've got now, we, we can use our um, uh, integration to find that area specifically between uh, 0 and 2. So when you're integrating with limits, it's usually we're dealing with X uh, values. So let's do that now. So this is part C. Okay. So part C. Now we've already done the integration above. So really I will write it out as two and zero because that's what we're finding. Um, and I will write this um, uh, equation down again as if we hadn't done it. But we've already done it. Now what I'm going to do now is just go straight to the solution, but I'm not going to include the C, the constant on the end, because now, as I said earlier, we've got limits. We don't need that. So I'm going to write them in square brackets. So this is the solution. Uh, four over three x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x and then it would be between 2 and 0. Now when you're finding um, this area now we're going to put in 2, we're going to substitute in 2 into that uh, new equation the 4 over 3x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x and then we're going to subtract them by sub uh, substituting the 0 in 2 um, and that will be our area beneath the curve so let's do that. So we're going to have um, 4 over 3 2 cubed minus 3 2 squared plus 5, 2. I'm going to create new brackets, again, square brackets. And then this one, to be honest, because 0 is um, going to be going into every single term, 4 over 3, 0 cubed minus 3, 0 squared plus 5, 0, the whole thing's going to just become 0 when we're subtracted. Now, you must remember there's always a subtraction there. So if any of this, uh, these values become negative, then they may reverse and become plus. So just be very, very careful when you're doing that. But in this case, because the lower limit is zero and everything in terms of the equation has got an X in, it just becomes zero. Right, the next one. So let's work this out. So we've got, um, I'm going to do this on the calculator. Now, a nice way to do this um, is to enter two into your calculator and click equal. So two and then equals and then use the answer key to sub in two. So it's like four over three answer cubed. It's really quick and easy to do that. And it sort of um, will save you making mistakes um, as well, um, just in case there are any negatives that you need to put in and that type of thing. Um, and we get then an answer of 26 over 3. Now, this is the area um, underneath the curve. This is the area. So let me, in fact, let me draw that in and then you can see which bit I'm talking about. So I'm going to try to draw a line down here like that. Whoops, let's make that a bit better. Draw a line down like that, line down like that. And then there. So if I shade that now, we've just found the area that you can see underneath the curve. And that would be 26 uh, over 3. And that would be units squared. Now, this is the clever bit. And it's actually quite easy to do. But I do find that some students struggle understanding this. To find the region above the curve, which is not what we found, we found the region below the curve, you have to then look at the overall shape. Now, quite often, this will either be a rectangle or a triangle or some kind of regular shape that you'll have seen um, at GCSE. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Now, if you look now, we've got um, a shape that goes from the origin zero to A to B and then all the way down. Now, if you look at that shape, it's a trapezium. So if I was to draw around that now, and I'll do that in red. So I'll draw around it in red so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'll kind of overlap it a little bit so, it, so, it's, uh, so it's, you know, easier to see. So I'm, I'm making it slightly bigger than it is just so you can see it. So I'm going to now find the area inside of that red shape, which is a trapezium. Don't forget um, the uh, vertical lines going from the origin to A. And from where 2 is on the x-axis to B are vertical, so therefore they're parallel. So, okay, let's do that. So that's pretty straightforward. The area of a trapezium. The, uh, you must remember the area of a trapezium, which is uh, more basic. Area of a trapezium 
is the general rule for that is going to be a half a plus b times the height. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky if you're not familiar um, or don't remember this, but um, a and b are the two parallel sides and the height is the side that uh, is the distance between those two parallel sides, the perpendicular distance. So that would be a half. Um, now, a would be, let, we'll say the left-hand side of that trapezium here, which would be a distance of five. And that's where finding the coordinate of a came in handy at the start of this question. So now we know that's five. We also know that B has got a height of nine because we worked that out earlier um, in part A of this question. And then we multiply by the height. Now, the height, again, is horizontal in this case. So you've got to be careful that you're looking at a, a horizontal distance, which is not usually associated with height, which would be two. Um, now what we've got is um, a half of two is one. So you could literally say half times two is one and then five plus nine um, is going to be 14. Now, that's units squared. You must remember, usually at A level, they don't say centimetres or anything like that. It's usually units. Um, so we've now found the area of um, the trapezium, the red trapezium. If we then subtract the area below that we found, the first part of doing question, uh, first part of C, if we subtract that from 14, we're going to be left with the region that we're trying to find. So what I'll do, I'll shrink this down a little bit so we don't have to go off the page so you can continually uh, see what I've done earlier. Um, so let's shrink that down just slightly just to give me a little bit more room. And all we're going to do now, um, and I'll probably highlight this in green and we'll write this in green. So this is the region now which is going to answer part C. So um, we'll, we'll call it shaded region. And the shaded region is going to be the area of the trapezium, which is the large red shape, subtract the area underneath the curve, okay? Which is going to then be 42 minus 26 all over 3. So I've converted 14 over 3 into 42. Uh, 14 over 1 is 42 over 3. Um, and that then would give you the answer of um, 16 over three units squared. And that's what they've asked us to show. And we've done that. So you've just got to be, these questions are quite easy, but you've just got to be very careful that you're entering values. That's why I said about using um, the calculator um, and using the answer key to sub values in. I think it's a really, really nice way of doing things, especially if you're subbing in negatives. And I do it all the time. Um, also, learn to use the memory functions on the calculator for storing numbers, um, especially with decimals. It's really important to get uh, accurate answers that way. Anyway, um, thank you so much for um, being patient and watching the tutorial. As I said, my name's Darren. Um, I'm the director of one-to-one -one maths tuition. If you are looking for uh, GCSE or A-level uh, maths tuition, um, I am around. I am available. So please visit my website. Um, one to one math tuition um, and uh, get in touch and I'll do my best to help you. OK, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. And bye for now. Bye bye.